Hey Club Scrap friends, I'm Trisha at Club Scrap and today we are going to be creating the rainy day pages from our page kit. And I have my instructions printed and ready to go. Printing, of course, is always optional. You can save the paper for your scrapbooks, is what I always say. And during today's workshop, we will be creating all eight of these beautiful scrapbook pages in that rainy day theme. Now, I don't want you to put yourself into a box here with this theme. I feel there's a lot of neutrality here. You don't have to have pictures from rain to make these work. However, I do happen to have quite a few of them uh, since it rained on my entire trip to Europe a couple of years ago. Um, but at any rate, I feel, feel you'll find a good home for these neutral colors and pages that we'll make with this collection. As always, our kits come with photo mats. We're going to set those aside just for now. And then we've got some of these um, Aurora Borealis raindrop gems. Those are really beautiful. I'm not even going to take them out of the bag. I don't want to lose them. We have these two adorable bronze umbrellas, some gorgeous ribbon here, and um, an entire roll of raindrop water washi tape. This stuff is super fun. Um, I already had so much to work with with the kit that I didn't get to use much of it, so you'll have plenty left over for various projects. And then, oh, there's another, there's another gem. I don't want to lose that little raindrop. It's so cute on the finished page. Okay, and then we have some printed die cuts. We don't do these every month, but this month is special. So we do have this sheet of die cuts here. I will set this aside. I think we're going to get started by um, filing our photo mats just to kind of get those into their homes. And uh, to do that, I have my accordion pocket file organizer. If you don't already have one of these or if you haven't made yours yet, uh, don't delay. This is a wonderful way to keep yourself organized and efficient while we scrapbooked together. And we'll just file everything into one of four pockets for our eight layouts we'll be preparing for all at once. That's the efficiency magic here. Okay, so I'm going to find the three gold photo mats in my stack of pre-cuts and put them in pocket one and two. And then I need just one rust photo mat also going into pocket one and two. Uh, next, let's find the other two rust photo mats into pocket three and four. Next, we have three light blue photo mats. I'm calling this sky, and that will go in pocket five and six. And then the three navy uh, mats will go into seven and eight. You'll notice right away that this navy paper, I'm not sure if you can see that on camera or not, it has a really beautiful um, texture right into the paper that's really unique and I just chose this chose this specifically for the collection. So those go in seven and eight. Let's put our paper in the order in which we will be trimming it. As always I like to hold the paper in the crook of my arm so it's up and off my work surface and I can access all of the colors easily. Okay we're going to start right away by finding the raindrop print. I believe this will be the second print in your stack. Just take one of those and then put it face down on the base of your trimmer and then I'm going to take the beautiful umbrella print and then turn that over to be face down. Next we'll be trimming the gold plane. So just kind of go back in your stack and find the gold color and then find the darkest blue which I'm calling navy. That's the paper with that beautiful, exceptional texture. Right away, I'm just going to put that texture uh, face down. And then we're going to be trimming our cut apart. So I've got my rubber ducky cut apart here. I think she's so cute. It's a sheep. <laughs> and then we've got a uh, another cut apart too with this. I've got sunshine on a cloudy day. I'll uh, just flip that to the plain side. Then we can grab our um, our die cuts if you like and put those face down. Find two of those sky planes and two rust planes in our next. So both of those. One gold plane and then the raindrop print. So this guy right here, face down. I love that print so much. And then the other navy plane and then the final umbrella print. Okay, we'll flip everything back over. If I'm going too fast, there is an option in viewing on YouTube where you can choose, there's like a settings gear shaped icon. If you click on that, you'll be able to slow me down to a speed of your liking, 0 0.75, 0 0.5, depending on how proficient you are. However, I do want to encourage you with enough practice, you will be able to keep up with me just fine with the exception of those spots where I kind of fo fast forward through a mundane activity. So um, the, the more proficient you become at doing the trims 
with me, the less you'll have to slow me down and you will be surprised at how quickly you catch on uh, to the efficiency of this. Okay, so my raindrop print, I'm gonna put, put this in my trimmer so that the darkest edge is on my right and the raindrops are kind of falling that way, okay? So I just make sure it's positioned that way. I also have a diagram of the print in the instructions that shows that very thing. So if you ever have a doubt, you can always confirm you have your paper positioned correctly by looking at the image in the instructions. Okay, so we are going to dive in and cut it nine and a half, and it's important that you have the paper flush at the top edge of your trimmer base, and then you find nine and a half. So I find nine, nine and a quarter, nine and a half. Those vertical guides really help. Stabilize on the clear bar and slice. Then we're going to slide down to five and a half. So five, five and a quarter, five and a half. If you're not used to measuring um, these, uh, it's pretty easy to kind of get the hang of it. Now rotate this five and a half inch piece. We're going to make three cuts, 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. You've just made three pieces that are the same size and those are going to be filed into pocket one and two and you have created the one and only scrap you will make from this entire set of eight pages. Just this one scrap, that's it. Okay, then we have these strips of this beautiful raindrop artwork. Those are both going to be filed in pockets seven and eight. And we'll move right along to that umbrella print. I always, that uh, first one, I'd just like to keep the images whole and be sectioned out the center. So that's what we're going to do. We'll cut it seven and a quarter. That takes off that large umbrella on the right. Stabilize each time. And then four and a half. Take this set of three umbrellas. That's going to go in pocket five and six. And then we have this strip. So we'll trim that horizontally. And it doesn't matter if you which way you turn this strip as long as it's horizontal. All right, first cut is at nine, then six, and three. All right, now you have um, these four rectangles. Uh, it doesn't really matter which, which two go where, but two of them go in pocket three and four, and the others go in pocket five and six. And then you have this remaining large piece here that gets uh, filed in pocket five and six with the other umbrella. And we're moving on to the next page. If you're following along in the instructions, we're at the top of page two now. Step three of trimming with the gold plane. Okay, we're gonna trim at a large number which results in a tiny piece. So our first cut's at 11 and three quarters. 11 and a half, another tiny piece. Then, Ten and a half. Nine and a quarter. And six. That's a few more cuts than those last pieces we had. Take the six by twelve, rotate it. We'll trim at eight and four. We do that a lot. We just made three pieces of equal size. Two of them file in pocket five and six. And the other one goes in seven and eight. The next strip to the right of your trimmer blade, if you aren't moving your paper anywhere, I'll just allow it to pile up. We're gonna rotate and trim horizontally at nine, six, and three. So that's nine, six, three. And we made four rectangles and they all go in pockets seven and eight. Then you have this wider strip here. This is going in three and four. The slightly smaller strip goes in five and six. And then you have two really skinny ones. Those go in seven and eight. And we're moving to the beautiful navy paper. Let's trim at six inches. Nice whole easy number. Then rotate, trim at eight and four. So we've done this before. Eight, four. Stack up the rectangles you just created and file those in pocket three and four. And then take the remaining piece and I want you to cut this, just follow carefully with me. Um, we'll trim at eight. It's a little different. Now take this eight inch piece and rotate it so it's vertical. And we'll trim at three and a half. Now take this three and a half inch piece and rotate it. 
We'll cut at four. Not a strategy here. All right, we have these rectangles now. These are three and a half by four inches right now. We're going to file those in pocket three and four. There should be two of them. Then you have this narrow strip. We will trim this at five and a half and two and three quarters. That's going to give me two rectangles that are the same. So the ones that are the same go in five and six. And then there should be a square left over that goes in three and four. And then this other four by six inch mat that goes in three and four also. I know the trimming on that one is a little tough. It was the um, the most challenging piece just because of this rotation happening here. So I hope you were able to follow through with me step by step and uh, get all those pieces filed. If you missed anything, just go ahead and rewind and work at your own pace. Now for this first sheet of cut aparts, if you're new around here at Club Scrap, this is kind of a newish way for us to do this, but if you look at the very outside four corners of this cut apart, you're going to see some subtle uh, light gray trimming marks. Those are designed to help you align this paper properly into your trimmer base so that we can get this down to a 12 by 12 as accurately as possible. So I'm going to start off by making a little cut here, lining up that, that line as close to the blade as possible. And I successfully did that, so I'll rotate and then I'll line it up again at those edges. And I'm slicing off approximately an eighth of an inch. Now when I make my third rotation, I should be able to look over here on the left and find my 12 inch mark. And then one more rotation and trim again at 12 inches. Hopefully that lines up everything and I can just simply take these minuscule scraps and throw them away. And we'll turn again so that rubber ducky is on the left side of this sheet. And I've got the cutting measurements for you in the instructions. We'll start out at 10 inches. And what that should do is bring the blade right through the gutter between these two art elements to separate them. Then just leave that lay where it landed and move down to 8 inches. Then 7 and a quarter makes a st narrower strip six and a half and three and a half now rotate this three and a half we'll cut at nine and a half that brings us to the gutter between those two art elements and we'll start filing where these pieces go so this sweet guy goes in pocket seven and eight and then this one seven and eight also take the next strip we'll trim horizontally at eight and a half all right, so this umbrella that goes in five and six, and the sweet little rain hat, three and four. Now, there are two strips the same. One of them gets placed in five and six, and the other, seven and eight. Okay, two more strips here. We've got um, umbrellas. Let a smile be your, um, your umbrella on a rainy day, three and four. I don't know about you. I love rainy days. Okay, uh, singing in the rain, that goes in seven and eight, and that is the entire first cut apart. So now I'm going to do the same exact thing for the second sheet. Once again, you'll find your little hash marks in the edges to remove that eighth inch piece. And this simply is this way so that we can get an accurate um, start to our trims because on a commercial scale it's very hard to get that cut to be perfect. Um, okay, one more rotation here we'll cut at 12. Should be spot on with my blade. Pretty close. I'm just going to double check that on this end to fine tune this. Yeah, that was That was correct. My scraps are gone, and as I was our practice, we'll, we'll trim off the skinniest pieces first. And once again, in the instructions, I've got this paper positioned on my diagram the same way it should look when it's in your trimmer. Okay, 11 is our first number here. 10. Nine and a half. And you should always just check to make sure you're not cutting through artwork. <laughs> uh, let's see, nine. Seven. And then three and a half. Okay, now a rotation. 
And the smallest, again, the smallest pieces will always go toward the blade so that we're consistently in our rotation. Then we got nine and a half and seven. Okay, filing the seven inch piece goes in pocket three and four. And then this uh, gold colored journaling prompt, or rust rather, goes in five and six. And then this rain makes everything beautiful, one and two. The next piece will trim at nine and a half. Seven. And three and a half. These two squares, rectangles, I think they're rectangles. They both go in three and four. And then you have two tags going into pocket seven and eight. Now, we're gonna cut this one at nine and four and a half. Both of these pieces go in one and two. And then no rain, no flowers. And you know what? I love how the top view of the umbrella, in case you didn't recognize that's what it is, um, looks like a flower and it's, it's just really clever. All right, that goes in five and six. Got these skinny strips here, five and six for both of them. And then we've got the quote, rainy days are good for the soul, and they are, three and four. And then this plain blue strip, one and two. Next we have the sheet of die cuts. Now these have been, these are trimmed with a th kind of an old fashioned way with a really cool wood, and I'll show you the die sometime. Maybe I can show you uh, what that looks like in my, in my live that I do on the 1st of February and the 1st of each month. Um, so you can see what kind of equipment trims out these die cuts. But basically, um, it's it's a steel blade that um, has these perforations. Those perforations are created when the die maker um, actually takes a tool and damages the the blade at that spot so that it does not cut in that location, thus allowing you to um, have a sheet that is whole and all you have to do is trim the remaining parts out. Now, that there's a good and a bad to that little perforation that's made in the die because it, it can leave a little hair on the edge and you can just remove that with your fingernail. Um, if you're really being meticulous, you can take a craft knife and cutting mat and literally uh, cut through the remaining uh, perforation that's holding it in place so that you don't have any of those little little edges on there. It's totally up to you. Um, this is working pretty well, just taking the nail to remove that. I hope you know what I'm talking about. I think you do. Um, but those those pieces are necessary in order to keep this um, sheet a sheet so you don't have all these little pieces. Okay, and then you can dispose of the negative space if you would like. So now you have this whole mess of die cuts and I have the distribution assignments for all of the pieces. But what's cool about this particular die and kudos to Jacqueline for her clever design. This is just amazing to me. But these are all designed to nest together in pairs. So check this out. This piece nests on here. Just slide it under that little guy. And this is one unit going into pocket one and two. There's another one, it's this one. They each have a hole in the top you can remove. This one has two of them. And this is designed to kind of fold over. I gotta be able to see my hole here. Line up with the second hole. And then this can slide under there. So I love the contrast created by the ivory paper on one side. And then you can, if you have an eyelet, I have it listed in the optional supplies, or you can just simply take some ribbon and tie this together, adhere it, you know, whatever. Um, but an eyelet kind of is a nice touch. And, you know, 10 years ago, I was using eyelets pretty much on every page, and now I use them on very few. <laughs> this pairing goes in five and six. Cuddle weather. This is a square that um, has a nest, so you can just slide the upper left, right, it's the upper left and lower right corners into the slots on its mate. See how that nests together? Isn't that sweet? It almost like literally cuddles <laughs> together. That goes in seven and eight. Okay, what else do we have here? Head in the clouds, same kind of a thing. The ends just slide under this clever design. This will be placed in pocket three and four, almost there. Here we have another one. There's a tiny little pin size hole on this. And here we've got two uh, 
slits. So that will slide in there. And then once again, you can try to get those holes lined up before you make your crease. Grain direction kind of is a factor here. And you can take a mini brad, pierce through there, and then um, attach that. Or you could attach it just to the one side here. Every path has its puddles. That's gonna go in seven and eight. Lastly, we've got another little uh, like tag shape here with a circle that also has a hole in it. Look at that. We've thought of everything. Nest, fold over, and then you can eyelet that, tie some ribbon around it, whatever you prefer, and that's gonna go in one and two. Sweet, right? That's all the prep. Everything's ready to go. So let's get rid of our trimmer and move our remaining papers in front of us. In the instructions, I'm gonna to turn to the very last page, page four, and we're gonna look at layouts seven and eight. So our plan is to build the layouts from bottom to top or from eight to one so that when we're done with this dry fit process, and by dry fit, I just mean um, arrange without adhesive, we'll be ready to put our adhesive down um, and we, we'll have every piece kind of in its place. So, so take the entire stack of paper, put it just to the left of the center of your workspace, the whole entire stack, all the remaining paper. Take the top sheet and slide it over. Now in front of you, you have the base for seven and eight, the sky paper, the plain sheets. Okay, so then, of course I need to figure out what's gonna go in there. So I'm gonna take everything out of pocket seven and eight. Make sure you get everything. And lately I've been just been encouraging my students to hold the materials that came out of the pocket if possible. I know that we don't all have a lot of dexterity in our hands. I can see that fading over time. <laughs> um, but if I can hold it in my hand, it's a little bit easier to distribute the pieces efficiently. Um, I'm gonna take the largest strip here with the raindrops on it and that's gonna go along the top edge and there should be a smaller piece that's gonna go on the lower right. So just get carry over that artwork. Then we have a strip here that butts right up against it. And then rather in between there is this gold colored strip to help add a little contrast, transition us. Same on the other side, that thin little gold strip. And I use my book binding glue to adhere that. It's just the easiest. And then here we have our title. I'm singing in the rain. What a glorious feeling happy again. Okay, now vertically on the left edge here, I'm going to have two tilted navy blue mats right over here. And then uh, balancing that on this side, I'm going to put a vertical blue, but this time I'll nest it with the gold. I did some calculations and I realized that if I had four rectangles of this size, I could perfectly balance this with some four squares. Now, if you have larger pictures, you can put one picture over all this. Karen does that a lot. She'll stretch a vertical picture or horizontal across two smaller spaces. Or if you have a lot of pictures, like a sunset, for example, um, you could have the different phases of the sunset going down. You get the idea. A lot of creative options there. And then over here in the lower corner, I've got these tags. I did go ahead and take a craft knife and cutting mat to remove the corners and uh, stapled some ribbon to the top. I didn't even punch the holes in any of the tags here. Journaling spot here, and then below that we got our cuddle weather. Across the top we have our cloudy day, and then we have this little sweet thing. I think I attached this with foam adhesive circles. Now I have a tip for you to share. This is a circle punch that I have found was the radius closest to the radius on here. So option number one is to leave these as rectangles. You could put brads in these corners if you wanted to, or you could take scissors and you could cut just along that corner in a curved way to remove it, to kind of match what's happening in the decorative element there. Another option is to take this punch and then you just find the position that aligns with the artwork and then move out about an eighth of an inch and then punch to remove the corner. And um, that worked really well for me too. So whatever you choose to do, leaving it the same, using scissors, using a punch, you can kind of enhance that uh, style a little bit. Okay, that is, that's everything out of the pocket. Let's take a closer look to the finished pages. Went ahead and used some bookbinding glue to attach those beautiful crystals. And the, the, the quality of this is really high. So I'm, just adds an incredible amount of um, 
sparkly splash to this page. And then I added that bronze umbrella with bookbinding glue as well. It's really a, a pretty um, dimensional umbrella. There's maybe one contact point, but the bookbinding glue held. And of course it did. <laughs> and then some stapled two inch ribbons, just fold them in half and stapled with a good quality stapler to get through that beautiful ribbon. On the left page, just used a black brad. You could use a brad of any color for that. More ribbon on this and foam adhesive to attach these three elements. Um, if you haven't used our foam adhesive circles, I love them for jobs like this. Okay, so now for the next step, we're going to take just that sky blue paper on the left. That would be the base of layout seven. And I'm going to pick just that piece up and slide it over so it sits on top of layout eight. And then take one more piece of paper and slide it stack that on top. So now I have should <laughs> have the base for layouts five and six in front of me. So this is the picture we're looking at and we need to empty the pocket five and six. So just try to grab everything out of there. I'm holding it in the palm of my hand. I got the whole page in my hand. Okay so uh, right edge goes this umbrella, left edge goes the triple umbrella. We have a divider to separate these wings. Okay so we're gonna Transition into that rust color with this guy on each side. Okay, now horizontally across the top here, I've got two sky. And then we're going to balance that by putting the other one down over here. So what do we do with the rest of the space? We've got two gold colored vertical pieces to go up top. Separating them, I've got a little anchoring right here. We got the nested die cuts. Just get, you can add some of the denim ribbon. I love this cotton denim. It's so pretty. Very easy to work with. Um, I would just have it in every kit if I could, but it doesn't come in every color. So when it matches, I tend to add it. Craig always tells me, you used that last month. I'm like, I know, but I love this ribbon. Here we've got a gold journaling thing, and I did the same thing here, just punch those corners. Some people have scissors that do that, like a decorative scissors. This gets added here. Then we have two nesting uh, mats here. So these had like raindrop marks on them and I'm going to disguise the fact that they're running horizontal by nesting them with these navy blue mats. See, every cut has a purpose. Okay, so this no rain, no flowers that goes over here under the umbrella and then I forgot to nest this one inch gold strip underneath here. Boom. Finished layouts. Let's take a look. Here we have this. The only real detail here is the eyeleted uh, thing here. And then that sweet denim ribbon tied on top. And then a little loop of that gorgeous um, uh, sky blue colored ribbon behind the journaling prompt. Here we have this attached with foam adhesive with a piece of stapled ribbon. I should probably mention, I, I kind of mess things up because I, I always try to allocate a spot for journaling now that I mentioned journaling prompt on every single page. So there's one on seven and eight, there's one on five and six, but I had swapped the base from two to four and then messed up my journaling uh, prompt allocation. So there's two journaling prompts here and none there. So if you want to journal on this one, you're going to have to just find where you want to put your journaling. <laughs> I apologize for missing that little detail. We try to always be thinking of those details, but we don't always get it right. Okay, three and four, we've got our um, raindrop print on the left and our gold on the right. You saw the slide action happening, and we will empty pocket three and four now. Okay, let's get this distributed. We've got these larger rust mats are going to go vertically at the top. And I just love how all these colors just work together so nicely. And then to the left, all I see is magic. Oh, so pretty. A caramel base. Now, it, in the image of the instructions, it doesn't look like it's this gold color. The reason for that is because I used the, the rain... Uh, raindrop washi tape and just ran it across the edges on the top and bottom. Hindsight, if, if I would do it again, I would just leave a tiny amount of that gold showing uh, past the, you know, the edge of the tape so you can see that contrast with the gold because the, the tape pretty much disguises the gold completely. I hope that made sense. Um, we've got the page title just underneath here. So lovely. Now across the bottom, 
we have the journaling prompt number one. <laughs> and I used my crop, of, let's see, my corner chomper on the quarter inch setting to round the corners, or if you just have a standard corner rounder, if you would like, you can do the same exact things to the two navy pieces below to kind of create some consistency. Let's see, on the other page here are the navy mats. And by the way, we nested. So we've got four, four by sixes on this page. Two vertical, two horizontal. And then we have the raindrop prints here. And how about some umbrella cut aparts going on the right. Journaling prompt opportunity number two. <laughs> you can round those corners if you want. Here we have, let's see, it goes this way. And this is a great spot for a picture if you have a lot of pictures from an event. And then I added this just kind of over the top here with foam adhesive. And look, I had this square left over and I'm trying to figure out, okay, where can I put this guy? And then I found this spot. <laughs> I should have bought a lottery ticket or something that day. It was kind of crazy. I love that, how that worked out. It was literally the last piece of the puzzle, and it fell right into place. On the final, uh, just foam adhesive here. Here's some of the organza. We had four ribbons in this kit. Four. So I had a lot of, plus all the washi tape, so I had a lot of ribbon left over. I apologize for the miscalculation there, but I did uh, wrap these with uh, organza, so you can see through them. When you put a small picture, you'll still be able to see. This was sweet, I thought. The head in the clouds with the uh, fuzzy edge gross grain, and I looped it around the sky. I looped it around the left side and stapled him in place, and I just think it looks like little fuzzy clouds. And then here I have a small loop of the organza tucked behind the square, the magical, perfectly sized square. On the left side, let's see what I do here. Here's that uh, washi tape peeking out. You can see it. This was the gold strip but we have some raindrops on it, so cool. And then check out my sparkling raindrop crystals here. So cool, and then I just stretched the jute or the denim ribbon over the top of this and made a bow and added it. Okay, now we do another slide. So I'm gonna slide only the raindrop print on top of the previous page. And then we have that gorgeous textured navy. And we have already arrived at pocket one and two. Isn't that amazing? Okay, let's see. Across the top left here, I'm gonna have two gold mats. And then we have the fabulous featured nested die cut over here in the left. I stapled some of that cloudy ribbon over that. And then I literally just tucked this behind at an angle so it was under the umbrella. Now on the right, one, two, three. And I'm checking my raindrop orientation. <laughs> so I've got raindrops falling. And you can arrange them however you like. I have them in the original order. I stretched more washi tape over the center of this piece. And we have a gold mat. Oh, I had forgotten this rust mat goes right behind to kind of make a splash with the cut apart here. Now over in this spot, we have the two equally uh, sized cut aparts. The heights are the same, so they look really nice. And then we're gonna just carry over with that rubber ducky in that open area here. If you want, you can add some ribbon. Finished layout. Here's number two. All I did was loop some, I made it the eyelet, of course and then looped some navy ribbon into there and just taped it on the back, attached with foam adhesive. Just a standard bow right over here. I was gonna put the bow here, but I put it there because it fit well. And you can see the washi tape stretching across on the border strip looks really nice. For layout one, this is the last layout, do you believe it? <laughs> oh, the magic. I stapled again the, the ribbons here to the band that stretches across where right behind this is tucked in. And then I did my classic trick of making these mats go behind the umbrella that would have been in the background. So on the original, what I basically did was took this mat and I decided I wanted it to cover just this uh, gold portion of the umbrella. And once I had it positioned, I took a pencil and I marked 
where the edge of the mat met the umbrella image. Then with a craft knife, I cut from where that mark was made all the way around and stopped by the other mark. That way I could slide my photo mat behind. I did the same exact thing on this umbrella. So let's take a look at again at the finished layout. I do this quite a bit. So if you've been around for any length of time, you've seen this happen. But from the back, you can see this is where I made those slices with my craft knife. And on the front, you can see how this image has been brought into the foreground. At this point, you can slide layout number one on top of number two. And then that completes the dry fit process uh, uh, for all eight pages. And at this point, you can proceed with adhering everything. If you would like to finish that project later, I'll share my uh, stick and flip technique with you. If you want to reload the bag, here's, here's a trick because it can be a little tricky. I'm holding the bag with the flap at the top, the sticky part of the flap facing away from me or facing the table and just go ahead and stick it down onto the table. Then when you flip the bag, the mouth of the bag is open to you. So I can take all of these parts and pieces and yes, they will all fall down into the bottom of the bag. That's okay. It's with the help of your instructions, it's easy to reassemble and replace everything. At least you just know where everything's gonna go. Then I take my instructions to, back to the first page slide those in so I know what's inside the bag and all my instructions and information is there. And then I can take my ribbon, my beautiful crystals, the umbrellas, and the washi tape, <laughs> and simply add that to the bag, unstick, I guess it is unstuck, <laughs> and close the bag. Now what I do is give this to Karen because I already made these pages and Karen hasn't. So Karen's gonna take these to the finish line and I'm sure by the end of the month, she will have these posted on the blog with all of these pages done with pictures. I can't wait to see what she chooses for her pictures on these layouts. Karen is a pro at finding um, unsuspecting topics for our finished pages. So if the rainy day theme has you concerned about what am I going to use for this? Just wait to see what Karen does. And, and I'm sure that you will find plenty of photographs that will work with this gorgeous collection. Hope you had fun today. I hope you learned something new. Hope you were able to keep up and follow along. And if you didn't this time, just keep at it. You'll get better and better. So I'll see you right back here next month with the March collection.